So for those who are watching, thank you for joining the stream. Actually, one of the things that I'll be doing this week is redoing my own design system. Yes, I'm planning on redoing my own website. And at the same time, I picked up a brand new client, which I'm totally excited about. And for them, I also installed a new design system. And they rightfully said, well, we want to know how we can work with that, how to set that up ourselves. So multiple people have asked me, hey, how can we work with this cool stuff? And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. Yeah, I'm gonna show you by doing it. Let's start at the beginning. I've downloaded the latest copy of Untitled UI, which is the starting point, the design system that we'll be using. You can download a free version at philipmalage.com slash Untitled UI. And what you get is actually this file. The only thing that I've done is I renamed it to just to have an identifier. And I also published it once because that takes the longest time. One of the reasons why I love Untitled UI is because it is extremely well documented. So it has a decent introduction. It talks about having all these different files and it can be quite memory intensive when you download the file. So as you can see, this is actually a lot of stuff crammed into one file, which makes it heavy on the memory part. And one of the things that you need to do when you start working with Untitled UI is actually to move things to separate files. And I'll start with that in a second, but I also want to dive into a few more details because Untitled UI actually has three different versions. They have the variable function, a layer style function, and a very simple version. So I'm using the variable version, which means that here on the right side, I have something called local variables, and we're using the version five from Untitled UI, which actually has a a lot of new cool stuff. So we can get rid of this for now. And let me show you how the file will be set up. So we will have our core file. We will have marketing components and application components. So these are actually linked like this. So this one goes there and this one goes there. And then finally, there are actually page examples. And those are linked underneath these two respectively. But why are we doing it this way? Because we want the files to be light, modular, and linked to each other. Because in the future, hopefully, if you set up your core file correctly, there's not too much need to go back to it. You can really focus on getting the content right for your digital products that you're building. So before I'm actually going to customize it, what I'll do is start splitting up the file. So as you can see, I already have three files open. What I did in my own project folder is I have the core file here and I created three new documents. The first thing that we're going to do is actually move the application components and the marketing components to their new file. Let's split up that file. We can do it from top to bottom. So we'll leave the foundation. We'll leave the shared components, shared assets. Let's double check if the file is actually fully published, which is not. This is why you want to split up the file because the Untitled UI is a very rich design system with over 10,000 components and variables. It's very powerful because yes, you can customize everything to your liking. So far, I haven't encountered a single brand within 12 years that was not able to fit within the design system. But to set it up, it takes a bit of work. So I created three files and what I did, I just copied these names as the file names, but I also created all the pages to save us some time. It is nice to pick a good starting point. It'll save you a lot of time. Once you have set up your FAQ page or a login page or a sign up page, I would highly recommend deleting all the other pages that you're not using. It's only confusing and you want to keep your file as clean as possible. Same goes for colors as well. One uh, small piece of advice from my end, before you delete color swatches that you don't need, make sure you've set up all your badges and tags, like those small elements, uh, maybe even your graphs. Maybe you're using different colors in your graphs that are not the grays and the brand colors. So I think everything should be up to date and published now. Great success. Took about half an hour to set this up. Yeah, now let's get into the fun stuff. So you now have a very nice off the shelf design system. If you would have a system like this, would you ever recreate it from the start? Because let's be honest, to only create all these different types of buttons, like setting this part up alone would easily take you a day. It's a lot of work. I think since it's UI based, 
UI components are almost always the same. I haven't seen a single digital product that doesn't have a button or an input field or toggles. These things are basic UI. So every digital application should have some form of this. So if you agree that you would have, need to have all these components, this is already a good starting point. But then the next question is really, I don't want my application to look the same as everyone else's application. And that makes perfect sense because your brand is unique. You want to make sure that it actually works for you. So how do you do that? And I think it's important to say, well, it, <laughs> you need to customize it, of course. And how do you customize it? You can say, well, what is your specific gray tone or your gray color? So everything, like I said, has a very nice description. So gray is a neutral color and it's the foundation of the color system. Almost everything in UI design, text, form fields, backgrounds, dividers are usually gray. I'll be experimenting with the warm gray color. So what I'll actually do is I'll move this up here and I want to make sure that all my grays are the warm gray. They have a separate gray for their dark modes, which is a bit more desaturated, I would say. Truth be told, I don't use dark mode for my own brand, for my own website. So I'm going to leave it as is, but I am going to change the grays and I'm going to change the brand color. And let me show you how to do that. So I use an app called Color Slurp. So in Color Slurp, I always keep my color. So I use a very dark foresty green color as brand color, but I actually want to have yellow call to action buttons. One of the challenges with Untitled UI is that its starting point is really one brand color. So if I would go to go to a landing page, you can see that it's actually very neutral. So you actually see the purple is used very rarely, except here. So there are some situations where you can say, well, maybe I want to have like a more branded color. So imagine the purple would be my green color, it would be very nice, but then the button would also be green and you would have a green on green button, whatever design you might want to say, well, I want my colors to, or at least my buttons to really stand out. And if I have a green background, that doesn't really work. So let me show you what happens if I change the brand colors. So these are the brand colors. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually copy paste my brand colors. One of the things you can already learn from Untitled UI here is that it's called a brand color. You should not name it green. One of the reasons is that if you ever do a rebranding, you can, it's kind of annoying if your brand color is called green and it's no longer green. So this way you can say, well, this is the different tints and shades of our brand color. And this is already going to have a really cool effect. But before I show you the changes that these, this makes, I want to change the font styles as well. All right, so these are the brand colors. So as you can see, it's kind of funny because it happens like Figma in the background is now really working to change every element that has that color inside it. So default Intet, there's nothing wrong with it. It's really perfect. Unless you have a better reason to pick a different font. Could it be your brand? You can definitely do that. For me, I'm actually going to open up a plugin called Batch Styler because for my brand, I'm using a different font. But the thing that I'm doing here is I've selected all the textiles that are in here. So it says successfully updated 68 textiles. I'm really curious to see what will happen now because with version five from Untitled UI. We actually have font variables in place now. So if I go to typography, I actually see here font face. I need to see what happens. There we go. So we now have a display regular and you can even see here that in the style, everything is linked to the variable of the font family, the font weight, even the size, the line height, the paragraph, Spacing, yeah, spacing, woo! -hoo. So this now is our typography. Anyway, I'll leave it here for now. I think this is giving you uh, a good example of how you're able to use Untitled UI to create your own design systems, to have it as a starting point for your business, for future clients, and to keep that consistency within the application. So once again, thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, feel free to connect with me on YouTube, Twitter, X, LinkedIn or send me an email at hi at philip.nl. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and see you next time. Take care.